How's it going, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast. I do apologize that this is not live right now. Um, I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to get it out to you guys live or if I was going to be on Spreaker live. So I'm recording this offline, and I'm going to get you this out to you guys this Sunday at some point. But welcome to the Sunday Night Heat, the WWE News and Rumor Show right here on No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast, your Canadian WWE podcast that talks about the WWE and No Holds Barred and anything we say pun intended you can follow the podcast on twitter at no holds barred at wp you can also follow myself at real kyle masters or my corporate co-host he is corporate cappy at corporate cappy on twitter you can also watch the podcast on youtube youtube.com slash nhbwr make sure you hit that subscribe button hit that bell icon for all upload updates if you want to listen to the podcast on the go we are available to follow on spreaker itunes and stitcher so go give us a five star rating and subscribe to those platforms as well Go listen to us wherever it's easier and convenient for you to listen to us. Guys, I'm your host of the Sunday Night Heat, as always, the self-proclaimed greatest host, Kyle Masters. I'm not joined by Corporate Cappy in the Sunday Night Heat. Uh, Unfortunately, he's watching uh, football, as many of you guys are probably watching uh, football. Today is Sunday. Um... I knew a lot of you fans out there are watching football, and that's fine. I'm still going to get this out to you guys at some point. You can listen to it Sunday night after football or tomorrow night, whatever you got to do. But this is Sunday Night Heat, guys. If you're new, we talk about any WWE news and rumors that are going on throughout the week. And I got some articles for you. I got one big article I'm saving for the end. I think I'm going to do that um, from like the rest of the Sunday Night Heats is the big article save right for the end. So... I got, I think, eight articles and then the big article at the end, which is some huge news regarding the Mayon Classic and Ronda Rousey, so you're going to want to stay tuned for that. Um, other than that, let's just jump right into it, guys. Um, oh, I do want to talk about one thing. Um, as you can see, I'm wearing the new Johnny Wrestling t-shirt. That's because myself and Corporate Cappy went to NXT St. Catharines on Saturday, and it was amazing. It was the homecoming for Ty Dillinger. It was, or no, it was on, sorry, it was on... Uh, Friday night, Friday night, I apologize, and it was awesome, probably the best experience I've ever had, and definitely a a good live event, NXT live events, there's definitely that different, um, different feel to them, and I, and I even tweeted out that this was probably the best live event I've ever ever been to, and that's including all WWE live events, like, NXT just puts on such a good show for a live event, like, the opening contest was Johnny Wrestling versus versus Killian Dane, that was like a 20, 25 minute match, believe it or not, and it was great, so, I loved what they do with the NXT live events, and obviously Ty Dillinger, our hometown boy, um, coming back in his homecoming, and and he had a good uh, speech afterwards, which can be seen on WWE's YouTube page. They actually posted it, so um, it was awesome. Such a great atmosphere. Um, I definitely would go to it again. Any any NXT live event that comes near here again, I definitely want to go to one of those, so we'll see what happens in uh, the future with that. But uh, awesome, awesome, awesome time. On Friday night for sure at NXT Live St. Catherine. So, all right, guys, I'm not going to waste any more of your time. Let's get right into the news and get to the first article. And that is the WWE new or rumors and speculation on the Raw Women's Championship match at No Mercy. Uh, Nia Jax and Emma defeated Sasha Banks and Alexa Bliss this week on Monday Night Raw. As a result, they have both been added to the Raw Women's Championship match at No Mercy. Alexa will defend her title against Emma, Nia, and Sasha in a fatal four-way match at the event rather than the announced uh, right before Raw of, or I think it was during Raw at the beginning of Sasha Banks versus Alexa Bliss one-on-one at No Mercy. I like I still I like the idea more of a fatal four-way. I don't want to see Sasha and Alexa go again one-on-one. I don't think that would have been a good spot for it. So we we'll move on with the rest of this article. Emma seemed to come out of nowhere to earn a title shot, but is there a reason for this? Here are some of the latest rumors and speculation on that match. Dave Meltzer on Wrestling Observer Radio speculates that the reason why Emma is involved in the Fatal 4-Way match No Mercy is to be the one to take the pin. Meltzer says that this would be very or it would be very surprised if Alexa or Nia were the ones to be pinned in the match. He also says that it could be Darby's mentally or mentality that Sasha can't be the one to take the pin after just losing her title right away. As a result, Emma's role could be the one just to take the loss. Now, I'm also hearing some more things that uh, Emma actually might even win the title. I've read that a few times. I don't know uh, how accurate that is because I don't think you should have Emma win the title. Like, you're just going to hot potato the belt. What's the point of the Raw Women's Championship? I thought we were done hot potatoing this shit, and already we've had two champions in the last month. What, about a month? I, I just don't think... 
there should be a reason to drop the title here. Alexa Bliss needs to win the title at No Mercy, in my honest opinion. I don't think there should be a title change. Yes, adding Emma to the match to take a loss does make sense. I mean, poor Emma. I mean, we all know the story with Emma and how we want her to actually get a chance here. And she's kind of getting her opportunity now with a title shot again. We can't really complain about that. But for her to take the, the loss in this one makes sense if they're going to go ahead forward with Nia Jax, Sasha, and Alexa in the future. Now, I wish they do something here to shake things up. Like, I knew, I mean, I, I do make agree with it. it would make sense to make Emma as the women's champion. It's just, it would only make sense if... Alex or Sasha Banks never lost the title and Alexa still held on to it up until now, then I would agree on that. But now you're going to give Emma the belt and then you're just going to have the three different champions in the last month again. It's it it's all comes down to this Vince McMahon so-called title mode change mode that he's in right now. Um, which I don't like it. It's not good booking. I, I wouldn't feel right. I think Emma, if she was going to win the title here, Alexa should have still been champion after SummerSlam. So we'll see what happens. But, I, I mean, Emma... If she wins the title, it's definitely a change that we need. I'm sick and tired of seeing Sasha, Nia, Alexa, Alexa, Sasha, Nia. That freaking transition of this whole three here. So they could go two routes. I mean, they can go the Emma way, or if they take make Emma take the the loss, I, I think Alexa would come out on top in that one. And I don't know what to do with the three after that. Like, what's going to go on with that? So we'll see what happens. Maybe something comes out of the Mae Young Classic and we get some more women added to the roster. We'll have to see what happens. But yeah, so far the rumor is that Emma was added to the match to take the pin. And I'm also reading the other stories of Emma being in the match to actually win the title. And I hope that actually isn't the case. So we'll see what happens when No Mercy comes around. Uh, next bit of news, guys. Rumors on Vince McMahon on why he is going to be on Friday night. Or Friday night. <laughs> Tuesday night SmackDown Live. It's so it's, you, When you say Friday night SmackDown, it just sounds better, right? You, you remember the days. Um, this week's episode of SmackDown Live saw Shane McMahon get suspended indefinitely from his position on SmackDown as SmackDown commissioner. This came after he attacked Kevin Owens after for crossing the line and mentioning his family. Owens threatened to sue Shane and dare to be over what happened. It was announced at the very end of SmackDown Live by Daniel Bryan that Vince McMahon was coming to settle the situation this Tuesday. Here are the latest rumors and speculation that are circulating the web about Vince McMahon's announcement. Dave Meltzer on the latest edition of the Wrestling Observer Radio speculates that the reason why Vince McMahon is coming to SmackDown Live next week will be to announce Shane versus Owens in a Hell in a Cell match at the Hell in a Cell pay-per-view. He says that it would make sense since Shane isn't an authority figure due to his suspension. He can now be a wrestler and put his hands on Kevin Owens. Some fans are also speculating that this match will be inside Hell in a Cell like I just read. I don't know why we said it twice. There is no question that Owens and Shane have more bad blood between them than Jinder and Shinsuke Nakamura. Well, fucking duh. No one wants to see Jinder and Shinsuke Nakamura again. You already, we already see them in a Punjabi prison match. And, or, sorry, it was with uh, Randy Orton. I'm sorry. Or no, was it Shinsuke? I don't even know because it was just bad. I'm sorry. <laughs> Losing my train of thought here anyways. As a result, it would make sense for it to be inside a hell in a cell. The preview for Nakamura versus Mahal match at Derby's website has no mention of them being inside the hell in a cell. Now, so you're saying is that the WWE Championship match is not going to be in a hell in a cell at a gimmick pay-per-view called Hell in a Cell, but Shane and Owens will be in hell in a cell. Don't fucking call it hell in a cell then. Stop with these gimmick pay-per-views if you're not going to put most of the matches, if not 90% of the matches, inside the fucking cell. We've said this for years now, and I, I, you guys say the same things out there. Stop with these gimmick pay-per-views if you're not actually going to live up to them. Don't just put one goddamn match in the Hell in a Cell and every other match on the, on the card is just regular singles match without a cell. It just doesn't feel right. You might as well just call it Vengeance or something and then have the Hell in a Cell match at the end of it. I, I really don't agree with them doing that. I hope if they're going to go this route, both Mahal and Shinsuke and Owens and Shane should be in Hell in a Cell. They both should be in Hell in a Cell. And the US, US title match, if there's going to be one at no Mer- or, or sorry at Hell in a Cell, it should be in a Hell in a Cell match. doesn't make sense for just one match out of what? Potential six to seven matches to be not in a Hell in a Cell. You've already had women's Hell in a Cell matches. You can put the women in there. It's nothing new anymore. So why not? No? Explain that to me. Let's move on. News on reception of the May Young Classic. It's interesting. WWE released the first four episodes of the May Young Tournament on August 28th. On September 4th, they released the remaining four episodes that brings us to the finale. The idea was to be a Netflix-style release where fans could binge several episodes at a time. 
This was a much different approach compared to the Cruiserweight Classic, which aired one episode a week for the duration of the tournament. According to Dave Meltzer in the latest Wrestling Observer Newsletter, the Mae Young Classic is a, actually a big hit so far. Meltzer says that the first eight episodes of the tournament are the top eight watch shows on the network this week. Well, you canceled all the good shows. What else are we going to freaking watch? <laughs> this means that the first block of episodes that were released last week beat both NXT and Tool 5 Live in viewership. Oh, give me a fucking break. What it... <laughs> Of course it's going to beat them both. Enough of this. What this data seems to tell us is a few things. The first is that the Dirty fans are obviously enjoying the tournament and watching the women's talent compete. The second is that the Netflix style of release seems to have worked and we might see more of this in the future. The third is that likely means more tournaments in the future from WWE. Now, I like the idea that they're going to do more tournaments in the WWE in the future. Don't get me wrong. I love those style tournaments. I'm on the fence about the whole binge-watching thing. I think it's a little bit too much wrestling at once. Like, you sit there and you want to binge-watch four episodes. I mean, by the, by the time you get to the fourth episode, you're just, like, tired out of watching wrestling. There could You could be tired of watching so many good matches that there could be a potential big blockbuster match, and you're just not up for it. I don't like doing that. I'd rather them do maybe... I don't know. If they're going to go the whole binge-watch Netflix thing, do two episodes at a time. I think two episodes is fine. It's enough wrestling. Do two episodes a week. I mean, they, they say they want to do Netflix style. The Netflix, some of the seasons don't actually do that. You see some of the Netflix shows, they do one episode a week. Sometimes people do one episode every two weeks. So it, it's not the same. If you're going to go that route, you might as well copy what they do. I mean, if you want to stretch it far enough, like I just said, two episodes a week. I think would do it for me. Just not that many. To me, like when I, we binge watch instead of watching Monday Night Raw, we were dead tired by the end when we got to the fourth episode. Like it, it's crazy. So I don't know. I I love to if they added more to the Mae Young Classic. In my opinion, I think they should have done more uh, more hype for it. It felt like the Cruiserweight Classic. There was more storylines in between, like between some of the wrestlers. And it, the Mae Young Classic. It was just their stories on their own. Nothing against each other. Like some of these girls have faced each other in like shimmer and other wrestling promotions and there's heat between them and then they just didn't really showcase any of that they showed the footage of some of them facing each other but they didn't really like make mention of it so i don't know i think they should have done something better like that i think maybe the 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 extra binged episodes kind of took away a lot from the tournament it kind of felt rushed a little bit i think a lot of you guys feel that too um so I think maybe next time, just if you're going to do the next tournament, do two episodes a week. I think we can get through that and then stretch it over like a month and a half, something like that. So that's just my opinion. We'll see what happens. And I'm actually excited for more tournaments like this. Hopefully we get a tag team tournament that draws in a lot of tag team action. I think that's the next one they're probably planning for the future. Um, next up, or next episode. <laughs> next article here. Reaction Reactions backstage on Dirty booking Raw live on Christmas Day. News broke out this week that Dirty would be running live episodes of Monday Night Raw on both Christmas Day and New Year's Day, January 1st and December 25th. Duh. You don't have to put the dates there. This has been a hot topic among fans as they debate if Dirty stars should have time off to be with their families or fans will even watch the episodes. How was the reaction of the Dirty roster to the news? Dave Meltzer of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter says that there was some unhappiness after the news broke about Raw being live on both Christmas Day and New Year's Day. Now... I'm just going to get my opinion off the bat here before I read the rest of the article. I understand the fact that there are sports that go on during these days and other sports besides the WWE. But I don't think WWE... It is popular. But do you actually think on Christmas night when most people and most families are are going to have Christmas dinner with their families that they're going to tune into Monday Night Raw? Why would you have it live? That's not going to bring people to say, oh, maybe we shouldn't have Christmas dinner. We should be watching Monday Night Raw. Like, are they a little cracked in the head there? Like, that's not going to happen. Why don't they just do a taped episode of Monday Night Raw? Who cares? Your your viewership is going to be the same. Rather, it's regardless if it's live or if it's not live, you're going to get the same amount of viewers. To me, I, I think it's not really that much fair. I mean, these guys are on the road more than a regular athlete would in another sporting event. Like, these guys are on the road constantly, wrestling constantly. I think they kind of deserve a Christmas and New Year's break, in my opinion. New Year's is one thing, but Christmas for sure. Christmas Day, give them a break. Do not film this live. Do not take this away from their families. The, the arena is going to be half empty. You're going to have to go into an arena that's going to fill maybe 6,000 max. I doubt you'll sell a full hockey arena for Monday Night Raw Live on Christmas Day. Um, so, you know, it's just in my opinion, 
you got to give them Christmas Day off. New Year's you can kind of talk about, but I, I just think as how much time they're on the road, I think you could give them Christmas Day off. I'm not really on board with RWB doing this. So I'll read the rest of the article out to you guys. Uh, RWB typically taped the show ahead of time when it fell on Christmas Day or New Year's Day. As for Christmas, for the past several years, the RWB roster would usually get Christmas Eve off and would always get Christmas Day off to be with their families. They wouldn't start back up shows until December 26th. This year, there will be live shows on both December 25th and December 26th for SmackDown, and Raw will be on Christmas Day. It should also be noted that it appears that this isn't Derby's decision, but the choice of the USA Network. What? USA Network? What the hell is wrong with you guys? We don't know, but it's just it appears to be that way. If it is, man, something's wrong with you guys. According to Dave Meltzer... A lot of families of wrestlers got the news this week and didn't know beforehand. As demonstrated by Matt Hardy's wife, Rebby, many probably weren't thrilled. And I remember uh, Rebby Hardy actually posted a picture of the Grinch on uh, on her Twitter page. So a lot of people are not happy. I wouldn't be happy either. Again, you guys know what my feelings are on that. I think they should get Christmas Day off. New Year's is another thing. And there's something you can talk about some other time. I mean, it's New Year's, <laughs> New Year's Day... It's, I don't know. To me, New Year's Eve, you can you can go to Monday Night Raw. You're not going to be wrestling till midnight. You can go out after the event and then celebrate all you want. So I don't know. New Year's Eve, something else. But Christmas Day for sure. Wrestlers should be getting that off. There's no way you should be having a live Monday Night Raw on that episode, on that night. Again, like I said, you're going to get the same viewership you as you would if it was a tape show. So that's just my opinion. Uh, rumors on Goldust masterpiece storyline. This is interesting. I've been really wanting to know what's going what's going on with the. Uh, Mr. Goldie over here. Several weeks ago, Goldust promised to unveil his latest masterpiece at SummerSlam. There were rumors circling that this could lead to Goldust becoming the manager of a younger talent. He teased, will I find my next hero, my next villain, or perhaps a beautiful new Scarlet? SummerSlam happened a few weeks ago, and fans didn't get even get any of the reveal. Not a lot of people remember that. Several weeks have now passed since the event, and we still haven't seen any progression. So what the heck is going on? Did WWE scrap the storyline? Here's the news. Goldust was asked about the storyline on Twitter where he told a fan to be patient. It seems that we could still see the storyline come to fruition and is being delayed as or put on the back burner by WWE. Now, what I think is going to happen with Goldust is, yes, I think he's going to be the new manager managerial role of somebody. Who that person's going to be, I don't know. I would love it to be the Velveteen Dream. I think they go hand in hand together for Goldust to be the masterpiece of, or sorry, uh, Goldust's masterpiece to be Velveteen Dream. They kind of almost have the same style. I know Velveteen Dream is more like a Prince style, but after seeing him at the live event uh, on Friday night, I think it would be perfect for Goldust to be the manager role of this guy. Um, whether or not Goldust goes down to NXT, I think I don't think it's going to happen. I think he's going to be staying on the main roster. But I think they're going to be calling Velveteen Dream up, to be honest. I mean, there's a lot of people that are in NXT, and he doesn't really need a spot right now. Maybe you bring him up and you send someone else down, because right now there should be some talent on the main roster that should be going down to NXT, as you guys all know that as well. Um, so, yeah, I think Goldust's next uh, masterpiece is going to be a managerial role of uh, somebody. And I don't think he's actually going to be wrestling that much uh, anymore, I don't think. Um, a lot of people want a new, like, woman figure like uh, Terry was for Goldust back in the day. So, I don't think that's going to happen. I actually think he's going to be the managerial role for somebody. And I'm hoping it is the Velveteen Dream, unless they have someone else in mind. So, we're going to have to see what happens with uh, Goldust and his masterpiece. Got some other news on WWE related, but I really want to touch base on it because I love his work in New Japan. And I love what he does outside the company. I really wish he'd come to WWE, but again, I also wish he doesn't come because of uh, what WWE would do to him and what he would hold get held back in completely. But he'd be a huge star at WWE, he'd just be held completely back when uh, I'm talking terms of wrestling based stuff. Um, you probably heard the news by now that Kenny Omega suffered a injury to his leg and will be forced out of shows for the next several weeks. Omega confirmed the news on Twitter saying, Unfortunately, I have to take a short break. Hold the fort. Leo Tonga, see you in Kobe. We have some information on the injury of what happened. According to Dave Meltzer, the latest, observer, uh, latest Wrestling Observer Radio, Kenny Omega has a surgery on his left meniscus this week. The surgery went well, and he'll be starting rehab, which he did just start rehab on Thursday. The injury didn't happen recently. He has had it for years, according to Meltzer. Omega apparently knew during the G1 that he was probably going to need surgery, but continued to work. So what a workforce this guy is, man. He worked through a torn meniscus through the entire G1 tournament. 
So it just goes to show you like how much work and effort this guy puts into his work. And I can appreciate that about Kenny Omega. And he's an incredible wrestler. I just I don't want him. It's like I want him to come to WWE and I don't want him because I know what they're going to do to him. But I want him to come to WWE because he'd be a huge star. And it's something that WWE needs. Um, in the break between tours, his knee apparently locked up. And, there was, uh, and that was when Omega knew he needed to get surgery. He still worked PWG anyways this past weekend. So he even worked a weekend before his surgery. Omega is still going to defend the IWGP United States Championship against Juice Robinson on September 24th. We'll have more information on his injury when it comes out. So it's cra- it's crappy, but it just goes to show you how much of a workhorse Kenny Omega is in in the, in the wrestling industry and how much he he does for the business. So I, I think he should just stay in New Japan. Him and the Young Bucks are doing so well on what they're doing right now, and they're so popular. They don't need to come to to become even more popular. They're probably making enough money as it is. So you know, I hope Kenny Omega gets a speedy recovery and we see some more great matches like we have seen from him in the past in the upcoming future. Um, next article, original plans for Demon Balor in WWE Revealed. Finn Balor was recently interviewed by Al Arabia where he spoke on a wide variety of topics. One of these topics had to do with his demon persona and that he has become known for. During the interview, Balor revealed an interesting tidbit about the demon and what it originally was designed for. Balor says that when he first told Carl Anderson about the character, Anderson told him that he would get laughed at. Really? Uh, This is a quote from Balor. The first time I did that, I said to my best friend Carl Anderson that I'm going to do this thing, which is the demon thing. I explained to him what I was doing, and he said, do not do that. You're going to be laughed out of the building. Well, Carlson, looks like he has been laughed out of the building once. Balor also says that the original plan for the character was to make fans hate him and have them be scared of him. As we know, that didn't happen, and fans have come to love this persona. Well, no shit. Um, Obviously, this didn't happen. This is a quote from uh, Finn Balor. That the whole demon character was designed for people to hate me more and to be scared of me, and it's kind of backfired in the sense that people kind of like it now. It's still a learning process for me. An interesting original, or this is not quote anymore an interesting original concept for the character balor could have played a baby face character but would have had his dark side to him and people be afraid of with the demon character this ended up being this uh, this didn't end up happening and a lot of fans have grown to love what he puts his paint on that's interesting so the original plans for the demon character itself were for people for, he's supposed to be a heel and people were supposed to be scared and hate him for that that's interesting. I don't. I, I don't know if that could have worked. I mean, I think it just goes back to what he's done in New Japan, all these like all these years in the past before he came to WWE, and and the smart fans I watch WWE know about him. I don't think he, he could have been booed or scared of from that character. People just love to see that. People want to see what kind of design paint he's going to come out with next. And we've seen a lot of different kind of Demon Ballers over the past, especially in NXT. We've seen the, the Jack the Ripper Baller. We've seen other types of Ballers, man. We saw the Texas Chainsaw Massacre Baller. So I, I love it. I, I understand, understand what they were trying to do. It's interesting that Carl Anderson says that it, <laughs> you get laughed at. I mean, it's, it's weird. I mean, if you put yourself in his shoes back then, you maybe would have thought the same thing. But uh, interesting that ba- uh, Balor was supposed to be a... There was also the idea of ba- Balor being a baby face as uh, Balor Club Balor and heel as a demon Balor. That's an interesting concept. So that was awesome. I- I'm glad to know what uh, the original plans were going to be. That's uh, interesting to know. Some unrelated... Another some more unrelated WWE news, but it's, it's hilarious to find out about it. Uh, GFW going under. Global Force Wrestling, a.k.a. TNA, for you guys that don't know. News broke out Tuesday that Jeff Jarrett would be taking a leave of absence from Global Force Wrestling due to some personal reasons. Over the past 24 hours, the story has morphed into Anthem Sports and Entertainment potentially looking to sell the company. Let us try to catch you up. According to the report from Justin Barrasso of Sports Illustrated, GFW is losing a lot of money and could be looking to sell. Here's an, here is an, ex, an excerpt. So this is, uh, this is an excerpt right from GFW. GFW is hemorrhaging funds, and sources close to the situation have confirmed that Anthem is ready to withdraw itself from the wrestling industry and sell GFW. Anthem even needed to gut the fight network in order to finance GFW. Damn. So these guys were bankrupt and doing everything they can to keep the company afloat. It's interesting. 
Brasso also says that Jarrett still owns the GFW name since the merge between Anthem and GFW hasn't been officially completed. Anthem owns the Impact Wrestling name and the tape library associated with it at the moment. According to the report, WWE would be potential suitors for Anthem's tape library if they didn't want if they did want to sell. This would include footage of current WWE stars like AJ Styles, Bobby Roode, Kurt Angle, and Samoa Joe. Mike Johnson of the PW Insider reports that there were meetings on Tuesday to discuss the future of the company moving forward. Dave Meltzer says the sources have denied that Anthem is looking to sell, but he says that this is the kind of story that they would deny regardless in order to not affect the current morale. So I think GFW is going under, man. I don't think they're going to last that long. Um, I think they're, they're going to get sold to someone who even had like the Young Bucks teasing, like, oh, maybe we should buy it. I know they're kind of joking around. And Matt Hardy joined in and said, you want to go have these, which is kind of hilarious um, because uh, they still owe the Hardys apparently hundreds of thousands of dollars. So that's crazy to think. So I don't know. To me, I don't think GFW is going to last that long. I don't see it lasting maybe more than a year. We'll have to see what happens. Maybe it does. Maybe they get some more funding from somewhere. We'll see. But that'd be awesome to get the tape library so they can actually do some backstories maybe some 24 episodes in the future with uh, AJ Styles and Kurt Angle and Samoa Joe. You know, at least we get some uh, stories for their blank time gap between year and whatever year it was. And there would be literally shows like no footage of any of them. Like we just got a bit of TNA stuff from uh, the Kurt Angle documentary, but that was really like not that much. So we'll see what happens with that. All right, guys, into the big story today. And that is the plans on Ronda Rousey in the WWE. And I guess a lot of news about this. So sit back and relax and listen to this. Ronda Rousey will be in the attendance of the May Young Classic red carpet and the finale on Tuesday night. Given that there are rumors flying around about her doing at least one match, I would expect them to do an angle on Tuesday night, especially after Rousey, uh, Jessam- J- Jessamine Duke, and Marina Shafir confronted Charlotte Flair, Bailey, and Becky Lynch during a backstage segment at the Mayon Classic taping. If you didn't see that, go back and watch that. Um, as first reported by the Wrestling Observer Newsletter, the rumors are that Rousey will be involved in a horsewoman versus horsewoman match at Survivor Series, like I predicted, that would lead to another match at WrestleMania. The names talked about at, as Rousey's opponent at WrestleMania are Stephanie McMahon and Charlotte Flair. A couple of years ago, we interviewed Ric Flair. So this article interviewed Ric Flair. He pushed the idea of Rousey versus Charlotte as an MMA fight. This is what Flair said. Let's do it. That's what I want to see. Charlotte's not afraid to get in there. All In all fairness, if she had a year to train, I'm not saying Ashley, would, who is Charlotte Flair, um, would win, but by any means, but if she had a year to get ready for it, it wouldn't end in round one. I'll predict that. It wouldn't be a 14-second tap out. Ashley would need to learn submission wrestling, but Ashley is strong beyond belief. Today, think about it right. Could She could do a 30 front-handed pull-ups and 100 push-ups. She can run at level 9 for an hour on a treadmill, and she weighs 155 pounds with 3% body fat. So Ric Flair kind of boosting up her daughter there. Um, to say that she can go in a MMA fight against Ronda Rousey, which is interesting. I don't know how that would go down. Um, some more news that came out of today, though, from Dave Meltzer. According to Dave Meltzer in the Wrestling Observer Newsletter, there have been talk of Ronda potentially wrestling in a singles match at WrestleMania instead. Apparently, Charlotte Flair and Stephanie McMahon are the names that have been brought up the most potential opponents. Charlotte Flair would make sense, as it looks like a WWE is going with a four horsemen versus four horsemen at the Survivor Series, and this could lead to a potential storyline with Ronda Rousey and Charlotte facing each other off at WrestleMania 34. As for Stephanie McMahon, the match was teased at WrestleMania 31 with The Rock and Triple H, although nothing could come of this already because of the storyline dying out over the years. Regardless, it looks like we could be seeing Ronda in a singles match at the event known as WrestleMania 34. Interesting to see Ronda Rousey in a WWE ring in a match, guys. That is interesting. I really want to know what you guys think about that. Leave me a comment down on YouTube or tweet at us at NoHoldsBarredWP. I really want to know what you guys think on what would happen if Ronda Rousey came into a WWE ring and how good she would do. I think she's she's definitely been trained by Brian Kendrick. We know that, and a lot of the other horsewomen have. So, I, for sure, the horsewoman versus horsewoman match is going to go down to Survivor Series. Maybe we get a little preview of what Ronda Rousey has been learning and how good she is in the ring uh, so far. Um... I mean, we'll, we'll just see what's going down. Like, to me, I, I can't really sit here and tell you that Ronda Rousey is going to, you know, grasp everything like that and kick ass. Um, 
know, I, I kind of see it being a, a big learning curve for her. Um, I think she's got the mic skills. We've seen how she can talk at WrestleMania 31. It wasn't too bad of a promo. And she's been watching wrestling all her life. She She's watched her be her entire life. She's been a fan for all her life. She's definitely can get a grasp of what it kind of means to be a WWE diva or oh, sorry woman and what she needs to do to get into the ring, what she needs to do on her mic skills. So I think she'll be good in the wrestling ring. It's going to be very interesting to see what happens at WrestleMania. But I do see a Charlotte Flair versus Ronda Rousey at WrestleMania more than a Stephanie McMahon. I really don't want to see Stephanie McMahon versus Ronda Rousey. That's more like a showcase spotlight bullshit that it's probably going to take like 30 seconds out of WrestleMania. So I don't know. I'd rather see a full match between Charlotte and Ronda Rousey at WrestleMania. So that's some huge news. Going out, and again, like their predicted match, I thought was going to be uh, Four Horsemen versus Four Horsemen at Survivor Series. That's going to be very, very interesting to see uh, and how they're going to build that up. And we'll see what it looks like it's going to happen. The May Young Classic finale, we're going to get the start of the buildup. So make sure you guys tune in to Tuesday after SmackDown for the May Young Classic finale. I'm really interested to see what happens uh, in that and if it's even going to play a factor in the finale match. So we'll see what happens. But other than that, guys, um, that's all the news I got for today. Uh, again, I'm sorry that this wasn't live uh, this week. Uh, I really wanted to get it out to you guys live, but I wasn't sure if I was going to have time to get it out live, and I didn't give you guys enough notice, so I didn't think that was fair enough. So, other than that, guys, that is going to do it for the Sunday Night Heat, your WWE News and Rumor Show right here on No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast. Your Canadian WWE podcast that has any, or talks about everything with the WWE and No Holds Barred, anything we say, pun intended. You can follow the podcast on Twitter at No Holds Barred WP. You can also follow myself at Real Kyle Master or my co-host at Corporate Cappy on Twitter. We're also available to follow on Instagram at No Holds Barred WP. So go give us a follow on there. If you want to watch the podcast, we're available on YouTube, youtube.com slash NHBWR. Make sure you hit that bell icon for all upload updates and hit that subscribe button. Everything would be greatly appreciated. If you want to listen to us on the go, we're available to follow on Spreaker, iTunes, and Stitcher. Make sure you give us a five-star rating. Anything helps. So go check us out wherever it's easier for you to listen to us. Guys, I'm your host, the self-proclaimed greatest host, Kyle Masters. I'll see you guys next time.